the audience, Indy, and uh, she saw the title, I'm sure I did. All right, so one more time, and uh, I was handed a camera on I was five on my folks. Uh, they were both shooters. My dad was a screen for NBC, and my mom used to publish a white magazine. In the old days, uh, probably anyone had a camera, and nowadays everyone has a camera of some kind. For some reason, this is all going in slow motion now, and it seems very fast when I was working on it. Um, what can I tell you? Um, photography sometimes is a matter of perspective. This is an old self portrait I did, uh, obviously, uh, about 40 years ago. But uh, since this is you yourself, uh, I'm trying, I tried to come up with some things I could sort of advise people how to take better pictures. But I couldn't come up with anything better than Cornell Capital, uh, Robert Capital, I'm sorry, who said, if the picture's not good, you're not close enough. Oh, he's got a, a nail on my grandma's cheek there. But yeah, if the picture's not good, uh, if the picture's not good, you're not close enough. And that's the most distinct thing I've ever heard. Now, here's a little advice. If you're trying to get a more stable picture, uh, it's a $1 tripod. Uh, it's a, a washer, a screen, and a quarter 20 screen. Uh, pull. pull it into your camera, drop it, I mean, pull it out of your pocket, sure. drop it, step on it, and bam, you've got extreme stability. Very good for video, by the way. I wish I could say I invented that. I wish I could say I invented that. I didn't, but I think it's genius. Um, I used to shoot for Rolling Stone magazine. I used to be a photojournalist before I got hooked on holography and 3D stuff. Uh, this was a picture I did on Simon with, uh, I used to work uh, for Rolling Stone with Hunter Thompson's uh, uh, book, uh, Fear and Loving on the Campaign Trail in 1972. So, um, okay, now, I, I think photography is generally divided into two categories. Uh, most of us, even myself, uh, work in this sort of safari mindset. We go out looking for that beautiful thing, that interesting thing, that ugly thing, that funny thing. And so that's why I'm saying you know, we shoot, you know, we capture. And it's a way to work. Um, this is a Gavetti, uh, it's called hair, in one ear and out the other. And um, so I, I enjoy that. We go out and look for that interesting thing, that ugly thing, that beautiful thing. That interesting thing, if I didn't already say that. Uh, and that's one way to photograph. Um, uh, most people do. The other way to photograph is to go inside and try to convey that which uh, that which comes from a dream state. Those images that you uh, are creating out of your own head that have nothing necessarily to do with the outside world. It happens to be my son dreaming, I hope. And uh, and so there's really two camps. Um, uh, now I have a theory that people, places, and things have a magnetic effect. So sometimes it's, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's doing mixed media things. This is Okie Doki Smoky, it's a uh, silver gel print, uh, vintage print from the 70s, and the guy used to hang on the grill, and somebody gave me a cigar, and I didn't finish it, and I decided he needed it more than me. So that became kind of a, a mixed media thing. Um, sometimes, wow, look at that stretch. Uh, you can fit the saw the shorter. Anyway, um, here's a picture done completely that you can do yourself uh, without a camera at all. Uh, so back in the 80s, I took a laser color copier, and uh, scan the flowers and then put it on a quarter million dollar drone scanner and uh, have a robot print it. And so uh, you can make amazing things without cameras. Um, as far as 3D goes, I'm covering a lot of ground here quick. Um, it's not going in slow motion at all. Um, there's half a dozen ways, if not more, to shoot in 3D. Um, I've tried to explore every single one that I stumble upon. Uh, this is something you can do yourself, it's not uh, that complicated. Basically, all you need is two pictures. One picture taken from slightly offset perspective than the other. Typically, two and a half inches of separation, just like your pupils. But if, in some situations, you separate the images more, like a series I did with of Miami from helicopters in 3D of Miami's architecture, and the images are separated by hundreds of feet. And that's called hyperstereo. Okay, we come to holography. Um, I had a very hard time condensing this into a little 20 second bite. But basically, um, everything in the universe is waves. And in holography, we capture the optical, uh, we're swimming in it. And uh, the, in holography, we capture the optical wave front that's emanating off an object. Like right here in this room, uh, mirrored, uh, I'm, I'm bathed in this wave front that is combined of all of you and the threads off of all your clothes. And ultimately, this itchy, busy pinhole of an eye, the pupil that I have, is capturing uh, the scene, this combined wave front. Uh, you see, it gets complicated very quickly when you start. If this was like a point on your shirt, and this is all right, now this is going to be fast. All right, um, yes, you can spend a quarter million dollars and build a holographic lab and make holograms. You can also do it very, very cheaply by, uh, I didn't invent this table, but I didn't build it. Jerry Tyler invented that. It's a big, giant, two-ton sand table. And uh, some decades ago, pre-millennial, 
So there, there are ways of doing things without uh, opening a book and buying things out of a catalog. You can uh, do it yourself. This is an abstract hologram I did. This is a little maquette. The reason it's here is because one thing you can do yourself, it's a little sort of like law of attraction type of thing, and that is you create a maquette or a drawing of that which you visualize and you want to manifest. In this case, it's a million dollar art piece that's 20 by 30 feet that's going to cost $150,000 for me to do, and so I made a baby version first. Here's something you can do. Clean up. You can pick up the trash. Uh, this is the uh, Magic City, uh, the Spot 79th Street, and uh, uh, yeah, there's something you can do for yourself. Uh, you, don't need, you don't need to clean it all up, just pick up something. <laughs> uh, this is from a film I did about water, it was a thing for a pilot called uh, The Mysterious Soul of Water. And uh, there's something else you can do. You can conserve water. Very simple. Do it yourself. I don't mean to sound like your mother here, but uh, we can do stuff. Uh, here's something else you can do for yourself. Uh, you can grow something. Now, this is very simple. Um, I bought some for everyone uh, that were just picked an hour and a half ago. And uh, these are sunflower sprouts. And basically, for the little bag, that, uh, for, the, for, for about $10, you can grow $100 worth of sprouts if you go into like a whole foods place to buy the seeds versus the best. But, and the uh, last one is called the Bart Dix Bad Boy. And uh, lastly, uh, uh, my point is, don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs>